I've seen this happen during raging kirtan. I mean, just just like we had some outrageous kirtans, especially in India in the early days of ISKCON. We had these kirtans that would go on and on for hours. And they were not just like sober kirtans. They were like wild kirtans. We were all, you know, a bunch of crazy youngsters and uh, had lots of energy. And oh boy, we just engaged all of it. <laughs> it was far out. And sometimes it's like Krishna would reveal something within the heart where one would feel uh, like, oh, I have attained the purpose of existence or something like this and become jubilant uh, in the middle of these kirtans and then begin laughing just out of spontaneous love for Krishna. Uh, Krishna has shown me the secret of life. <laughs> They're looking at me like I'm crazy now. <laughs> but when you experience these things for yourself, then you'll say, oh, I remember when Babaji told me about this, and I thought he was nuts. <laughs> now I'm also nuts. <laughs> Belching. Sometimes belching also becomes a symptom of ecstatic love for Krishna. There is evidence of this in poor Namasi's address to one crying associate of Radharani. My dear daughter, don't be worried because Srimati Radharani is belching. I am about to offer a remedial measure for this symptom. Do not cry so loudly. This belching is not due to indigestion. It is a sign of ecstatic love for Krishna. I shall arrange to cure this belching symptom immediately. Don't be worried. This statement by poor Namasi is evidence that ecstatic love for Krishna is sometimes manifested through belching. Sometimes trembling of the whole body and hemorrhaging from some part of the body are also manifested in response to ecstatic love for Krishna. But such symptoms are very rare, and therefore Srila Rupa Goswami mentions them but does not discuss further on this point. So, that's chapter 27. Now, are there any questions about Vibhava or Anubhava? Have you felt any of these things? Have you experienced any? Huh? After prasadam? <sighs> Poor Namasi, by the way, is... Uh, Radharani's grandmother. And poor Namasi is, is so expert in the mellows of ecstatic love for Krishna that she canceled uh, Radha and Krishna's wedding. At one time, Radharani was supposed to marry Krishna. But poor Namasi, somehow she got some astrologer to say that, no, actually there's there is a uh, incompatibility between their charts and they shouldn't get married to each other because they wouldn't be happy. Which is actually true. Or they wouldn't be as happy as if uh, they were eternally lovers. See, the, the ecstasy, the ecstatic love between Radha and Krishna is uh, uh, without any rules. It's beyond rules and regulations. And therefore, uh, it's more ecstatic than married love, which is always, you know, regulated by different scriptural rules and so on like that. Uh, therefore, poor Namasi, uh, in order to give Krishna more pleasure, uh, she arranged that Radha and Krishna would not get married.
Purnamasi is very, 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 very cool lady. Huh? She's an older lady and she's very, very experienced. Uddhava, are there any questions? There's one that's not yet. Okay. Let Vikram ask his question then. Exactly, is the Nandanini? The Nandanini? Yeah. yeah. It's about that long. Ah, so about like three and a half feet. Yeah, something like that. Oh. Mm -hmm. How is Krishna able to handle that? Oh. Krishna can do anything. <laughs> Is ready? Is question ready yet? Are they still working on it, huh? Must be a big question. <laughs> so, for example, yawning and uh, belching is uh, a part of Anubhava. Yes. And, uh, when it's in relation to Krishna. To Krishna, yes. Yeah. For example, we do service to Krishna and uh, sometimes we belch after prasadam, sometimes we yawn. Mm -hmm. But um, I was wondering how about uh, rolling on the ground? It's on the same level or is it uh, on, a, on a higher level because... Level. Yeah, a level of ecstasy. Well, you, know, the, there, you can't go to Radio Shack and buy an ecstasy meter, you know? I mean, <laughs> who's to say how, what level it's on? Uh, what I meant is uh, sometimes we do experience those um, signs of Anubhava, but uh, I never experienced rolling on the ground. Well, wait till we go to Vrindavan. And you see Krishna's footprints by the Jamuna. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 Babaji, but, 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 No, 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 I, I didn't mean that way. I meant uh, actually, a dancing you mentioned also mm. is uh, also part of Anubhava. Yeah. And uh, I had this experience back in Canada. I, I, I told, I told oh, you, you didn't about. dance here the other day? No, but th this was um, uh, this was like from inside that I was like I couldn't even handle it. Like I would jump and Hare Krishna and chant and this was like completely okay. out of my control. Cool. At that time. <laughs> so. But we can we can also cultivate these things, you know. We can also develop these these ecstasies. Mm -hmm. Different kinds of dancing in particular, can become very, very ecstatic, uh, even through practice. And uh, it, it is also the science of invoking those emotions, right? Yes, right. See, the, the Western ontology, people have uh, this idea that emotions um, have to, are something that just happens to you, that you can't create them. Yeah, but this is, I don't know, this is like, from the Vedic point of view, this is like a ridiculous idea. That somehow, that if you, if you create an emotion, that it's somehow not authentic or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be true in terms of a materialistic emotion. And especially if someone is trying to uh, deceive someone, another person. Huh? But in the case of devotional service, all of these activities are so purifying dancing in front of the deities, chanting, singing loudly, you know, laughing in association with devotees. How many times have we been associating with devotees and, and somebody will say something funny, crack a joke, and we'll all laugh, you know? Yeah, especially about Krishna. <laughs> yeah, about Krishna, because Krishna is so outrageous, yeah. you know? Krishna is amazing. So why shouldn't we uh, express these emotions in the form of Anubhav? 
see? And just because culturally we don't usually do things like roll on the ground, you know, um, that doesn't mean at some point that we won't feel like it, you know. But even so, these things can be cultivated. Uh, these different emotions, different bhavas, anubhavas, and like that. Just like we cultivate anartha nivritti. See, we cultivate those qualities by practice uh, until suddenly we realize why they're necessary. And then after that, there's no effort required. See, in the beginning, we may imitate uh, giving up this and that and the other thing. Uh, push ourselves. Yeah, we may push ourselves, even though we don't feel like it, right? But at some point, we realize, oh, this is why I should give these things up. The meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. 